In this video trade is looking at how we can select a target when we're in a very strong uptrend or very strong downtrend and we have fresh air above or below us. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so setting targets in trading uh, can be complicated. It can be pretty simple. If you're using a standard kind of rotational strategy, let's have a look and look at uh, Qs for example here. You know, if you were trading uh, to the long side and looking to kind of scale out after a couple of day move, you're probably going to use the 280, 281 resistance level, previous resistance. It's a small trade. It's a little couple of day swing scalp type trade. Oh, it's not a scalp trade. It's a couple of days. It's more of a swing trade, but you get the point. You're literally looking for a specific level, maybe looking for it to test for 300. If you were pushing on the short side, where's your target going to be? You're probably going to be looking to scale some out at 255. The point is, however you look at these, and we can pull up any kind of market we want here. Uh, let's put up, pull up GME. Uh, in fact, this is a bad choice. Let's pull up Baba, um, Alibaba Group. You know, anything where you have something above you, something below you, targets become a little bit easier. You know, you can see there's a cluster of support down here. Um, unless you're looking and you've got a thesis over a longer period of time, multiple months, you're looking for you know a much more considerable move. If you're a kind of four, five, six, seven, ten day position you're probably going to expect this as your target to the downside. You might ex expect to tag some highs uh, to the upside. That's fine. And if you're scalping as well, if you're day trading, um, you know, you're looking at a smaller chart, same kind of thing. You look and go, right, well, I'm looking for a short and my short's obviously going to come back to some sort of mean or maybe I'm going to look for a retest of lows. There's always a, a very obvious target. Well, often there is. Now, where it gets challenging, guys, is when you are in a, uh, let me try and find a good example for you. In fact, I'm in one at the moment of the SLR. Um, when you're in a market that's just punching into fresh air, so it's all-time highs, it's all-time lows, or it's at 52-week highs, 52-week lows. Because let's be honest, even if you scroll back and you had some kind of resistance way back, is it that relevant? Probably not. I mean, that, again, that's uh, you know my perspective on it. But I think that you know as we come to more current conditions, then the market changes. Things that are moving the market are changing. Catalysts are changing. But one thing you can do. Is let's say you're long on this, and this happens to be a position I've got um, at the moment, and you're saying, well, where's my target going to be? We keep going to new highs, we keep going to new highs. So you've got a couple of ways of doing it. So one is to use a standard trend line, and then you just extrapolate your trend line out, and you go, right, well, you know, I'm going to assume that after we break through the high, we're going to come up and we're going to hit the trend line. Now, you've got to be careful because depending on how long it takes you to get there may mean that your target is more extended. But let's say, it's taking you two or three days. You kind of go, right, there's my daily count. It's a daily count, by the way, this is uh, VSLR. You kind of look at it and go, right, three or four day run isn't unusual. Where would that take me if it took me to three or four days? You know, you've got day one, day two, day three. Uh, and even if you did this before this candle, say, you're still doing the same thing. You're saying, right, day one, day two, day three, day four. And then you're looking approximately where the market could go. There's no point in doing it on day two. Now, listen. If you do it on day two, fine. You say, well, it's going to be 38. Okay, I'm going to have to be um, a little bit more mindful of that. But if you're saying, well, the average length it's taken to move um, from a high to low, et cetera, et cetera, and you're, again, you're using current conditions, you're moving your candle, or you're moving your uh, crosshair, should I say, along as the second day, third day, fourth day, and then you're going up and you're saying, okay, where does it cut that trend line put in? 38. 33. So that's a sort of initial type of target for you. Okay, just going back, we'll jump the gun a little bit earlier before. If it happens that it's tagging the upper trend line very early on, you've got two ways of looking at it. And I'm going to tell you my favorite in a second. You either go, right, I need to come out the trade because it's tagged the upper trend line. That's the thesis of the trade, out at 38 or 37, whatever it was. Or I'm perceiving this as strength, and maybe I'm now going to look for a further extended move. This might just stall things. Perhaps I need to be aware, watch my price action on a smaller time frame. However, be aware that we could now break and really kind of accelerate up and this kind of breaks the upper trend uh, and position yourself accordingly. So, you know, that's not a bad way of doing things, using the trend line. But I would, if you're after the fourth day and you're sort of tagging the upper trend line, that's going to be a time to take some off the table. Might be time to take the full trade off the table if your thesis is purely based uh, around that. So that's one thing you can do, guys, extending your trend line out. Um, and using that as a kind of reference point to say, hey, you know, things might 
start to stall there. Another thing you can do is you can measure um, what's happened. In fact, you can, there's a little tool here you can use called price range. You can measure how far price has gone above the prior high. So in this case, it's gone let's say 13 percent you know let's call it 13 uh, percent uh, and you can say how far did it go above this high here oh look you know not far off that swing high there that was there it's a little bit more um well actually it's 13 percent you know so you can go right well a couple of times we've broken through the high we've gone through by kind of 10 to 15 percent you know let's go on the side of caution so you look at the last high and you go well actually this that brings us if we're going to break through uh and don't forget to go to extend it percentage wise you know minimum here is going to be uh, about forty dollars, and then the maximum could be around forty-one dollars. So it gives you again another framework is using it percentage moves, percentage um, extensions above the prior high, using the previous breakouts as an indicator. And there were some similarities. Yes, I get why you might not like this so much because you're only using a small piece of data, but it's another way of doing it. And don't forget you control your stops, guys. Don't forget your five period moving average, uh, things like that, just trailing it along it. When it's very aggressive, a five is good. Talked about five many times before. You know, how many times does it close above it? If you're getting the extension of trend like you're getting this type of environment, then you might want to come out on the second close below it. Not necessarily the first, because the first often gives you often gives you another break above, but you might want to come out on the second close below it. So there's a trailing opportunity there. And if you want to go higher and you're looking for swing it swing it a little bit further, uh, when it's you know reasonably aggressive 10 is not a bad way of doing it 20 brings you a little bit wider but we know about moving average and trailing stuff um so another another way to do targets guys uh kind of touched on it earlier is to do the multiple day rule so three or four day rule again we're eyeballing back on what's happened say hey three days if we exclude this kind of environment we're saying that even though you go you've had pulses of three then a pause pulse of three to four then a pause it's moving in these kind of three and four day cycles give or take it's never going to be perfect but give or take four days move here you know three days and a bit down three days up three days to a bit you know so maybe you go right well i'm going to close it on the third day or the fourth day regardless of where we are now this isn't risk management we've got to have our stopping at some point anyway but this is when we're taking profits on a trade that's going our direction you might say right day three I'm going to come out of the trade on day three i'm going to look for a reversal i'm going to close it at the open on day three or close it at the close on day three and trade it again based on the current conditions for the asset you're trading i think that's the key regardless of how you're positioning regardless of which one you choose kind of see if you can mesh yourself into the the flow and the price action the feel of the market some are parabolic some are very very choppy some are kind of you know the trades are going to be very narrow uptrend not going to be very very strong and you've got to align yourself with that you can't expect it to suddenly rip up um, align yourself with what's happening and try to kind of really feel where the market could go be realistic with it and you know extrapolate those things out and think okay well it could go here that would be my primary target maybe i'll scale up some here maybe i'll do that uh, rather than just picking a number and just saying oh, i think it's going to go to 45 that's fine it could do but is it likely to do that within the next three days probably not could it do that over the next few months quite feasibly but then that's the trade idea you've got are you looking for extended trade idea are you just looking to get on the momentum of a short-term four or five day move all right guys hopefully that's helped see you next one take care bye bye